as the conversation of diversity expands, the ballet world has tried to preserve their traditional values. However, there is a growing fear that it will not be considered an art form if it is made inclusive. Today, I'm going to be sitting down with some trailblazers, Casa Pancho, Eric Underwood, and Erin Sanchez, as we explore body values and issues, as well as a lack of representation in the ballet industry. There is an issue, an underlying issue at the moment, which is inclusivity. Now, there's been conversations that it threatens ballet being considered an art form. Now, why do you think the idea even exists? There's this idea around uniformity, particularly with women, and looking the same. So the ideal corps de ballet is looking the same, almost down to having the exact same hair color. Um, if you could just amplify one person and make her 30, that would be the ideal corps de ballet. It's quite difficult to do that when you start talking about difference. Casa, you've actually dedicated your career to tackling the color bar in ballet in particular. Can you explain what the color bar is and what influenced you to kind of take this, this on? There's this idea, especially in British society, that when we say something like we want to see more black leaders or more black dancers, the immediate response is often, but we don't want to lower the standard. So when I left school, I wanted to ask the question, what would happen if something was started pro-black dancers? So not anti-white, yeah. but pro-black. And uh, that's, that's where Ballet Black began. And the first thing was a ballet class taught by an ex-professional ballet dancer who was black. And just that person, in power in the room change the dynamic? I think um, ballet will always have the idea of wanting to preserve tradition. Yeah. I think maybe we could look at trying to find a way to do that while not keeping things incredibly dated. The problem is you don't have enough people of color to choose from, the pool isn't large enough. Did you see much change? Did you see others challenge those, those ideals? And I think the biggest change I've seen is having this discussion. Wow. I think being able to talk about race and everything is something that um, this discussion keeps coming up, and that's the most profound change. What Casa's done to create Ballet Black is fantastic, but in an ideal world, I'd hope that we didn't need something like that, yeah. that we didn't have to segregate more in order mm. to become more inclusive. There is a term such as pancaking. Could you summarize those for us? Pancaking is where you take shoes that are typically pink, and if you are any other shade other than pink, you paint the shoe a few times to make it match your skin color because in ballet, we're really obsessed with our lines. We want a perfect line. So we want from the tip of your toe to the end of your finger to be one continuous line. And that's why it's been really important recently that black dancers have been able to get shoes in their own skin color. What do you think are the most prominent scenarios that you come across when meeting dancers. Once you are in that environment, you are comparing yourself with others. You're comparing your body with others. And now with social media, we have the opportunity to compare ourselves, not just with our immediate environment, the which when, when I was dancing, it was just my classmates. Yeah. But now it's everyone in the world. And so those things are, are challenging in terms of the culture of ballet. In my head, I wouldn't go, oh, the director doesn't like my body. You go, okay, well, actually, I'm different. So maybe it's about changing what we see as beautiful or what we value as important within the world of dance. Is there space for plus size and curvier dancers? If I'm adhering to the rules of ballet, I would find it quite difficult and maybe even dangerous right. to do a pas de deux with a plus size woman. There is a way forward and no, we don't have to be skeletal on stage. We right. don't have to have an eating disorder, yes. but we've got to have strong, healthy bodies. So understanding, um, say, for example, the difference between um, your weight and your body composition. And if you've got more muscle relative to your weight, you might look bigger mm. on stage, but you can, you can move your body, you can move other bodies very effectively. Yeah. And I think understanding those physiological differences can be really helpful for people who are kind of looking at their bodies and going, I'm too big, yeah. I need to be smaller. I want to see inclusion in a really broad sense. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Unmuted to talk about inclusivity in the ballet world.